Okay, before I start today's Retro Hub and Commodore 64 setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see, hit notifications, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new video, and it really helps out my channel too. So we're looking at Commodore 64 today in the Retro Hub series I've recently been putting together. I've got a whole playlist for Retro Hub. If you're new to Retro Hub and you're not sure what this is about, I'll leave the link in the description for initial setup guys so you can see around in what's what in retro hub so we're looking at my favorite microcomputer today which is the commodore 64 i've covered commodore 64 and even the amiga a lot of times on my channel i've got an entire playlist dedicated to commodore 2 so we're going to use what's likely the best Commodore 64 emulator and not only covers Commodore 64 but all Commodore 8-bit computers. This is Vice. So there's many different C64 emulators that I've also covered such as CCS64, uh, C64 Forever. But yeah, really Vice is probably the best. So we're going to go to download and under Windows we're going to find 64-bit, 32-bit. And we got two versions of Vice 3.8. We got GTK3 and we've also got SDL2. Now, the one I'm going to use for this is GTK3. And we also need to know if you're using a 64 bit or 32 bit computer. So, to find this out, just go to your search bar and type in system information. From system information, if we just check out where it says system type, we can see I'm running a 64 base PC, which is a 64-bit computer. Most computers today, or in the last several years, are 64-bit base computers. If you've got a 32-bit, it will say times 86, in which case you'll need to download the 32-bit. I'm going to download the 64-bit GTK3. That's going to bring you over to SourceForge. Now, I've already downloaded this, and it's actually on my desktop. So you're going to download a zip folder. And in the zip folder, we've got the GTK3 Vice. If we just drag and drop that onto the desktop for now, just let this extract. There's a lot inside of this pack. And while this is extracting, I'm going to briefly give you a little guide on games for Commodore 64. So I've got a few different file extensions or different types of formats. So as we can see just there, I've got several games. In under type says D64. We've also got .crt. we got .tap. So .d64 tells us that the game is disk based. So once we emulate this through the Vice emulator, it's going to literally load just like a real Commodore 64 1541 disk drive. Uh, we got the .crt, which is a cartridge image. So in other words, that would plug into the back of the C64 expansion port. And that would be the quickest way of loading Commodore 64 games, which in this case still is. We've also got tap, which is likely, in fact, it is a fact, it's the longest way to load programs in Commodore 64, which many kids in Britain in the 80s and 90s had mainly cassettes, which was pretty annoying, really. But anyways, that's the different types of files we got for Commodore 64 when emulating. So what I'm going to do is go into my Retro Hub folder, and I've still got the same folders in here for this series. So we already we've set up PS2, NES, PlayStation 1, SNES, and the other day I did Wii. So... We're going to create a new folder in there. This time, we're going to create C64. And of course, in the C64 folder, I'm going to just drag and drop those games inside it. So it doesn't matter if you've got .d64s or all .crts or all .taps. They're all going to work the same with the emulator itself. So the games are now in place in that C64 folder. And if I just come out, in the emulators folder, we're going to drag and drop the GTK3 Vice emulator inside. Now, before we go into Retro Hub itself, we do need to set this emulator up. We need to make it boot into full screen mode. The emulator executable for Vice is going to be in your bin folder. And if I just scroll down, you're going to find several, actually many, .exes. The one we're going to use for C64 is going to be the Times64 SC.exe. So like I was saying just a minute ago, Vice Emulator covers pretty much every Commodore 8-bit computer. We can see Commodore Pet here, Commodore Plus 4. Uh, we've even got Super CPU uh, 64 executable just here. But anyways, this is the one we're going to need, which is the Times64 SC.exe. If I just open this up, so, as you can see, this is opened up into a Windows mode. 
and you can actually hear the floppy disk drive there loading so what we're going to do first of all is just go to preferences and we need to ensure this boots our games in full screen mode so from preferences we're going to go down to settings and from settings if we go to display and then host display what we want here is full screen decorations we want to check this one and under vic2 we got various different options here for window sizes that type of thing and of course the vic was the video chip for the c64 so as we can see under vic2 palette if i drop this down it'll give us different color palettes for commodore 64 games i'm going to leave this one as default which is ccs64 We've also got different render filters here, such as CRT emulation. I'm going to leave all this for you to find out or play around with that yourselves. And if we go down to input devices, we got joystick just here. Now, of course, Commodore 64 games would majority, probably 99% of the time, run games from joystick port 2. There is the annoying couple of games which do run for port 1, but like I say, port 2. I'm using an Xbox controller for this, and as you can see, we got port 1 and port 2. We can easily swap over ports should you need to during gameplay. Just go to swap joysticks, and that will change from port 2 to port 1. So it normally detects your controller automatically. I'm using, like I say, an Xbox controller, which is through Bluetooth, and this works really well. So if you want to know any more about Vice Emulator, I have covered this extensively and I'll leave the link in my description for that as well. And like I say, I'm a big C64 fan and I've even set up this emulator to go online with it, that type of thing. And yes, the Commodore 64 can go online. So anyways, what we're going to do then is take a look at the joysticks at the bottom. As you can see, if I mess around with my D-pad, you'll see this is lighting up. And that tells us this is now in port 2. So anyways, we got everything set up for now just here. What we're going to do then is open up Retro Hub and start setting this up. Okay, so as we can see, everything is still intact from the tutorial I did the other night. And what we're going to do is press escape just here. And we're going to go down to systems. And from systems, we're just going to go to the top and we're going to scroll down until we find Commodore 64. And here we go, C64, Commodore 64. We got a photo of what looks like the C64G, which was the German uh, model, looked like a bread spin, but had the colors of the C64C. And we've also got just here emulators, Vice emulator, which is what we're using, uh, RetroArch, which I'm not using, and we've also got Denise, and Denise is another C64 and Amiga emulator, which I have covered before. We also got supported extensions just here, so we got .bin, .crt, which I've already explained, .d64, which I've already explained, and we got many more different file extensions, and here's .tap. And we also got .program, which is .prg, which runs pretty fast, just like the cartridge.crt images. So we got this set up for now. What we're going to do is go down to emulators next. And again, we're going to go to the top and we're going to look for Vice. So here is Vice. Now, the next part of this is down to the path. Now, we need to go to loads for this. And in my case, everything is on my desktop. So I'm going to go to Users folder, into my Computers folder, which is Jamie. Here is my Desktop folder, and my Retro Hub folder is just here. If I then go into my Emulators folder, here is my Vice folder. And remember, the executables to open up different versions of Vice is in the Bin folder. Now, we need to be very careful just here, because like I say, We've got many different executables here, so make sure you select the .64sc.exe. Double left click, this is now firmly put in place. Next thing we're going to do is just go up to save changes. Okay, once that's been done, we can now press escape to come out, and we can also see Commodore 64. So we're going to need some artwork. Now, a couple of these titles here you might not recognize. They're not classic games. These are considered homebrew games, which I also follow modern 64 games, and I'm a big fan of them. So we need to start scraping some artwork. So again, press escape, and we're going to scroll up to scraper. And if we scroll downwards, what I'm going to suggest just here, 
when you drop this down, if you've already scraped all your artwork, but you're missing artwork for the games which you're just putting in, then just go to without metadata. So as we can see, this is now selected all five of my C64 games. If I go to scrape now, now, normally when I do this, I get a lot of errors because of the way the names are spelt. So we got 64 Annabelle, or Cannibal as I call it. We're going to select that and confirm. And next up, we're going to just go to Fix It Felix Jr. So obviously this game needs to be fixed, funny enough. I'm going to confirm that and just let this one download the artwork and logo. Uh, I'm going to go to Saber Wolf next and just go to confirm this one. And finally, we have got Silkworm, which is just here. And this is really a cool shooter game. I used to play a lot of as a kid. Really recommend this one. We're going to go to finish and everything's set up by the seams of it now. So I'm going to press escape and let's try and open up a C64 game. And as we can see, everything's running perfectly. So I'm using uh, the controller I got, the Xbox controller in port 2. And trust me, this game really does your eyes in after a while. Okay, so if I just come out of that by pressing the hotkey, which is escape button, as you can see, that was an instant loader because that's a .crt or a cartridge image. If I load up something like Salamander, which is a .tap or rather a cassette image, this one could take a long time. Now, like I say, dot tap images are very slow loaders because they're cassette based, but there's actually a way to speed up this process. If I just double left click on the full screen, if I go down to where it says warp, I can actually speed up the process. And if you did need to swap over your ports for your controller, I'm going to just drag up this window. And if I left click just here where it says joysticks, I can just go to left click on swap joysticks and that will quickly swap to port 1. Okay, so I'm not going to load up that entire game, but I'm just demonstrating how to load games. And just to say that if you can avoid dot tap games, then avoid them and go for dot d64s, dot prgs, or dot crts. So other things we got in here, I'm going to just show off Fix It Felix Jr. because this one, as well as a new game, and I'm always trying to support new games and developers. <laughs> I'm gonna wreck it! And that's it for today's Retro Hub in Commodore 64 setup guide. So 
Yeah, if you're new to Commodore 64, there's a lot of information there to take in. Uh, like I said, I've covered the voice emulator for Windows PC, and you can use that guide to further enhance how your Commodore 64 games look through Retro Hub. So like I've been saying, I'll leave the link in my description for that one. And if you are interested in C64 modern games, I've even got a dedicated playlist for C64 modern games. So anyways, if you like the video today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.